Hey guys, Rick here. In this What Can We Learn, we're going to look at a game on Steam called Artificial Defense. Just recently launched. It's under the $10 price point. I think it's uh, 5 or $6 at the moment. And it's a game that was uh, created by just one guy over the course of a couple of years. And we're going to look at it and study it and analyze it from the point of view of how to combine genres. It does that really nicely, as well as really, really cool player communication. How to communicate between you, the developer, and the player, and there's a lot of really good hooks in there that we can look at, as well as a really sweet user interface and a consistent look and feel throughout. So we're going to jump into the game now, I'm going to take you through it, point out some things, we'll have a look at artificial defense. Okay, I'm going to start by taking you through, just quickly showing what the gameplay is all about. And first of all, look how cool it looks, huh? Really spiffy. So I've got a little, you can see in the middle of the screen here, I've got my skites, my skites, my sights, I was going to say scope my scoop sights, and I shoot, and there's a uh, delay before things, you can see them blah, 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 coming through the air here, so I'm shooting at stuff. Uh, so that's one part of it, it's a, it's a accuracy based shooter type game, so I'm shooting my little missiles here, uh, my little rocket things here. Up in the top right you can see that I've got uh, a few different weapons, when I click through E I've got uh, bullets, I've got rockets, I'll do a couple of those, I oh, know, just the one, bam. Uh, I've leveled up a little bit, so I've put my weapons back to fairly basic weapons. You can upgrade them as you go, which is cool. Uh, and then there's a big, uh, big mofo uh, missile. I right-click, and it drops it. Comes from out of out of me, God mode type action. There we go. Kaboom! Kabawa! Gets a lot of stuff there. So these little critters, you can see, are coming across what looks like a motherboard or a chip or a, or some sort of graphics card, which is thematically super cool, right? You have a look at it. Here's the hard drive doing its action, uh, and they're trying to get over to my my base over here. So there's a, a tower defense component to it. It's a tower defense game, but with this interactivity where I can I can shoot, uh, as well as uh, if I click on R, I can actually lay down some towers, so bam, this is going to drop a guy in there, it's a tower coming in, uh, there's no paths, some tower defense games have paths, it's just these dudes are getting from their spawn points, trying to get over here to get me, uh, I can drop towers, but the hybrid combining genres part, which is really cool, is I can shoot as well, and there's a lot of precision, there's a real kind of uh, timing to particularly when you've only got one bullet at the start. I've got three here, I'm cheating a little bit uh, to try to get these guys and shoot them out. And it gets far more complex, more stuff going on in the screen, it, it speeds up, uh, lots more going on. Now there's one other component to it, uh oh, better get this guy before he reaches there. One other component, uh, this stuff down here, I don't know the terminologies too well, but uh, I click on this and I can spawn my own kind of uh, warriors, I guess they are, that come out, oops, no, this is left click, they come out here and they capture that, and that allows me to, to uh, spawn little guys that go float over in here that gets me extra points. My resources up here is RAM, which is cool, it's all thematically really tight, right? Uh, RAM, and when I shoot, I'll shoot here, you can see that uh, RAM went down by 1 to 38, uh, and uh, that that's my limited resource that I have. So that's basically it. It's tower defense combined with, uh, I don't know what to call this, but shooting, you know, shooting um, shooter. And uh, I'm defending my base here. The maps get more complex, the weapons are upgradable, all that kind of good stuff. Really nice gameplay, really tight. And while we're in here, I want to talk a little bit about uh, theme and user interface and the whole vibe of it. And I talk about this so much. Let me just shoot these couple of suckers. This is a medic. Try not to get the medic. Oh, no. Got him. Oops, my bad. Uh, I, I talk about this a lot. It's consistent. You can see, like, this fan underneath here looks really neat. And this dude over here, I love him. He's playing the turntables. It's got this techno feel to it. it it's random, right? Why is there a, a guy playing the turntables when there's these things spawning? Uh, there's a little bit of randomness to it, but it all fits. It all feels like it belongs in the same world. So we can learn from it consistency of feeling. Here's a boss coming in. Let me just nuke him while I'm talking away here. Boss deleted. Okay, while we're in here, I want to talk about the user interface. Just crisp, like very, uh, very tight lines. Oh, crap. Uh, <laughs> playing and talking at the same time. We got him! Kapow! 
Let me do one of these big ass bombs to really knock him out. This is level one, by the way. This is the easiest you can get, so uh, it gets tougher and crazier than this. Ow, got him all. Uh, uh oh, they got my thing that I captured. Not to worry. Uh, here's the telling me that I met my objectives. Uh, there's this nice kind of triangle feel, the blue with the white. The, the UI is really sweet. So this is, I'd say this is a benchmark game in terms of if you want your user interface to feel very integrated, very professional, very slick, this is a great game to study from that perspective. Even the little touches like, you know, the machine, uh, you know, counter dials up here in the top left, you can see, looking really neat. Uh, I think I'm totally dead here. Uh, uh, ah, craziness. So that's what I want to show you in terms of gameplay and this part of the UI. Uh, next I'm going to jump into what I think is super incredible, which is the communication to the player. Just little things like the pause menu. If I'm saying to myself, what the heck am I trying to do here? It's telling me task 1, survive at least 3 minutes, task 2, task 3. Very clear, front and center. Uh, it tells me what's going on uh, at, at all steps. I like it a lot. Down here there's a little bit of extra uh, intel. Shut down, which is basically end the level. Score screen, again this kind of machine languagey, you know, calculator looking type stuff. It's cool, it fits. It fits with the theme. So throughout, uh, when I talked to the, the developer, uh, the Theemo, Theemo, I think I pronounce his name, he is looking, like he told me he was looking for minimal and fresh. That's what he was going for with his user interface, with his whole visuals, with his whole approach. And there's this kind of uh, techno guy playing his beats in the background there. You can see him, he's playing his beats. Really neat. Very simple looking geometry, but it has a, a vibe to it, a presence to it, yeah, which I like a lot. I like a ton. Uh, and it, it's all, it's very clean. I think is a really nice word. Minimal, fresh, and clean. Now, I'm on this main screen, and what I love about the main screen, we can learn from what he's done here, all of the communication from the developer to the player. I love it. For example, down here there's a whole big area. It feels very integrated. It doesn't feel like it, it pops out. It feels like it belongs. Incoming message. He's themed it because this is a computer theme. You know, you're uh, you know, inside the machine type feeling. Incoming message. Did you know there's no dev team, no contract work, no high budget marketing. Just me, Themo, uh, hardworking solo indie developer. I love that so much. Love it so much because if you're sitting there and you're an indie developer and you put your blood, sweat, and tears into this, sometimes people don't know that story. They don't. They don't know who you are. They're just like, ah, oh, it's another game. So he's putting some of his story in there. There's good marketing, and I look at that and I feel even closer connection and relationship to him and to the game. I'm like, cool. One guy did this. I like that. If you want to help me, just write a review. I love that. A call to action. Because, you know, the more reviews you get, the more positive reviews, the more popular your game looks, and the more places like Steam, or if this is a game on the App Store, the more it gets surfaced organically as a, as a game of the day, or as a, or as a featured game, or as a, you should check this out. And when, obviously, when you go to look at a game, you're going to look at the reviews. If it's on Steam, very positive, super positive, then you're going to look at it and give it a shot and play it. Uh, so I love that. He's asking for what's important to him. And over here, very nice. Send feedback. You click on it. You know, this doesn't look cobbled in, right? This looks like it belongs in the game. So what can we learn from this is if you're putting in these mechanisms to talk to the player, make it look like it really belongs and do it boldly. Request a feature. I love that. Report a bug. I love that. Other complaints. Send some love. You click on that. Basically, he says, hey, dudes, thanks for being here. If you can write me a review. He's saying that again other complaint now if I click on these it immediately pops up my email client and it has a whole bunch of text in there saying good work man uh, and you know thanks for this and and I've got a complaint or I've got a bug so I'm gonna click it now you can see it brings up my email client it's telling me you know report bugs it helps me out please try to be as precise as possible it's it's all written in there and then I can just be like you know I found a bug. I'd probably write it correctly. <laughs> okay, bug 101 writing. Do better than a little bit than I, I found a bug. Uh, but there it is. So I jump back into the game. What I also love about the player communication is the integration of YouTube tutorials. So let me click on the tutorial maps. You know, again, lots of great communication. It's telling me what's going on. You probably can't see me click on the 
the play button because it's underneath me yabbering away down there. Uh, nice, big, clear communication to the player, like here's some text, here it is, but what is really cool, a lot of people don't read, maybe their English is not their first language, or, or if you've got it localized in different languages, maybe they just, they don't like to read. I, I tend to just, like, let me in, let me add it. But there's this nice big old YouTube button here. You can learn this. If you've got a game that requires any sort of um, communicate, any sort of tutorial, any sort of complexity, put a YouTube button down there, click on that, boom, fires up my browser, takes me straight to the appropriate video that shows me him playing the game and taking me through it. So you can put anything in there if it actually uh, loads. It's the perfect video at the perfect time. You don't want to be trying to embed all of those things into your app or into your game itself. It's so much easier to finish the whole thing and then just record a video of you yourself uh, you know, going through what is required. So I had this myself. I didn't know how to do a particular thing from the instructions. It wasn't quite clear. This was the step I was missing that you have to click on the building and then click on the next thing. So going and watching the YouTube video, it really helped me figure that out. So I love this as a mechanism. We can really learn from that, that you put a little symbol, YouTube video, click, goes to there, and you can have a video that someone watches to talk them through it. The other cool thing is, if your game evolves, you can very easily evolve the video on YouTube, you know, swap in a new one. It doesn't require you having to do a lot of in-game, cinematic-y, text, formatting, UI, layout type stuff. So I love that, I really love that. So that's that's a really quick and sorry a little bit random <laughs> playthrough of artificial defense. I wanted to show you guys how to combine genres, or not how to combine genres, but that they combine. He combined the genres really nicely of this tower defense type game. Uh, you know, tower defense meets RTS is what he calls it. I clicked on the. Uh, so I really like that he combines this tower defense and RTS. I think that's really. Uh, really lovely with this shooter mechanic as well. Uh, I'm sure there's a name for it. I don't know, but this kind of you know action shooter. Uh, I, I love the overall vibe. It's very consistent. Even the fact that there's the blue for the UI. It's a blue and white kind of theme. And in here, you see a lot of blue and white going on uh, in the game. I, I love that there's this dude playing his tunes. If you can hear the music, it's this kind of techno disco electronic music electronic music in an electronic world it fits you know it's consistent if it was classical music it wouldn't make sense right it wouldn't jive I love that and I really love the communication in this game from the developer to the player you know please give me a review hey it was just me developing this solo hey here's the video tutorial if you want it here's plenty of information hey there's also things like you know hey you might have clicked in the wrong spot uh, or hey it's time to level up hey you got you got more, uh, I forget what the currency is, but you got more stuff, so you can go upgrade your weapons, you might want to do that. Really nice communication between the, the player, uh, the developer and the player. Thanks for watching today's video. Feel free to give me a thumbs up if you liked it and you'd like to see more of these. Leave a comment below letting me know maybe if there's a sort of game that you'd like me to review and check out and analyze. Uh, always love to hear from you guys in the comments. You might want to subscribe if you haven't done so already so that you see my videos in the future. And check out some of my other videos I've got posted over here. I do a bunch of videos to do with motivation for game developers, following your dream, getting it done, sticking to it. Uh, as well as other tips and tricks and ideas for indie developers, as well as my other stuff in terms of generally getting a job in the games industry and following your dream, getting paid to make games for a living. Catch you next time.